Welcome to another episode of Glorious Life on Wheels. Today you are going to see a DIY minivan build that will absolutely blow your mind. It has everything you could possibly need. A beautiful trifold custom bed with a shower underneath, a solar hot water tank, hot and cold running water, and so much more. Well, hello, Barry. Hello, Carol. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. Got a little rest from that big drive. You drove up from Florida. Yes, but I took much slower than you did. <laughs> yes. you, you were hustling across the whole country. We were. We were. You have a build here that I can hardly wait to share with everyone. It has so many just cool, cool features. We're going to show them underneath that bed is oh, a yeah, shower. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to also show them that shower up there. And you have it set up so both cold and hot water from different sources can come in. Yes. The sol up here is your solar water heater. Uh huh. That can go basically for the shower. It also can be pumped to the front kitchen sink if you needed hot water and it was uh, you know warm enough in the tank. Well, you know what? Let me quit talking and I'm going to have you do the tour. Now, before we go any further, what kind of minivan is this? Okay, this is a Toyota Sienna XLE. Uh, it was a deluxe model. I ripped out everything from the front seat to the rear door. Uh, I put down uh, through sound deadening over the entire surface. I also put down three quarter inch plywood and I put the vinyl flooring over that. So you have three layers of flooring all the way from front to back. Yes, correctly. Right from the rear seats all okay. the way to the back. Now, this is what year? It's a 2008 and I bought it in 2015. Now, let's look at the bed here. So this bed is custom built by you. Yes. So this bed is convertible. How is it convertible? Okay. It's four pieces of uh, plywood three quarter inch and then I stained it okay this pulls out and I have my clothing in here and there's also the bedding is in there and uh, some of the cooking stuff that goes way deep that's a lot of storage yes, it's, it's, the, it's the largest storage area that I could possibly get in here so uh, then as then this would get folded okay open over to the other side because I think we can see it even better from here okay this would just come forward. I hold it a little bit in the middle, drops down, and then I have a large, for me, a large bed. So now, what size is this bed? I figured out I'm five foot four, okay. so it fits me with extra space. Someone probably five eight could comfortably, completely still fit on the bed. Now, I'm curious, these um, covers for the foam is this memory foam yes it's memory foam and then it was upholstered at a shop with a slightly more padding and uh, they custom fitted the four cushions so it's very very comfortable yes it, sounds like. it was professionally you know done by the seamstress and is that six inch foam yes six inch so it's very comfortable all right and let's go around the back and look at some other areas and how the bed then has what the bed has under it. That's really okay. We're talking that, about the, the 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 mini shower area. The mini shower. Let's go look at that. So this is how the bed looks when you have the cushions all up there. And then what does the bed turn into? Okay. Oh my gosh! This, this is where we have to make it to a second I, thing other than just the bed. And I gotta get up here. Oh my goodness. So this becomes your shower and your area for your toilet. Yes, there's the toilet. We'll get that out of the way. That's something everybody already knows about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have the shower area. It's, it's plumbed down from the roof, from the solar uh, tank. It comes in over here on this pipe. This just circles around. It hooks to this. You can hose down an animal or uh, whatever else you want outside. So let me, you explained this to me yesterday, and I'm going to try and explain it the way you explained it to me. Yes. So you have it set up so that this here is connected to the solar water tank on top. Right. 
and that provides hot water. And that can go either to this shower head here, or you can divert it with valves and make it go to your kitchen. Right. It still comes down here and it goes down through. In other words, it goes right through this point. There's pipes that run that way and across to the kitchen. Okay. I'm going to let you set this up so everyone can see okay. how the shower is set up. Okay. And then we'll come back once you have it set up. But this is the area. And it's, what is the material that's inside the shower? Uh, this is, a, a, again, a plastic material from Home Depot. So we're back now. You've got the shower set up. And can you explain everything for us here as far as how you have it so you're protecting the van so it doesn't get wet okay we have over here a, a bar that i have velcroed oh, okay right on here so it can't be removed but it stays on so you velcroed this just, shower and what is this shower curtain made of it's i know just a regular shower curtain from uh, amazon that you uh, cut down plain, and plain modified. cheap plastic one i try to get the thickest one i could get and this was more than what i needed and then you did that all the way around. Yes. On the sides, it doesn't have a stick. It, it just has the Velcro. All right. Now, I'm looking over here. And how do you have these little bars slotted in over here? Okay. This, I was in the drapery business and shade business. This is just a curtain rod bracket from a wall bracket. I just took the little part off, and that's the only part I use. And that's the base for right. the... There's, and oh, I see now this. And there's another one that comes out some, so it gives you more elbow room Th in there. Is, this is the uh, <laughs> thing, so it doesn't stick to you when you're showering. And then you sit down there. You have a stool, right? And let's see how okay. that actually looks. If, if I were boondocking, you could leave this open. Okay. If you're modest like myself, you run your hatch down, of course, and then I sit here, and then I, I can just spray the water. Gotta turn the valve on. And you're completely contained in there, so the water's not going anywhere. Yes, it's it goes in here. I'll leave it for maybe an hour. It's completely dry. I roll it up on its sticks and I put it away. And you have a drain at the bottom, I see yes, down there. We have a drain Let I'm me take this off there. Yeah. We have a drain right over here. It goes right outside. Okay. And you if you are somewhere where you can't let it drain down onto the ground you just put what a container you underneath put there? a container it's, it's you're not even going to use maybe a gallon a gallon and a half of water so right. uh, any kitchen tub would work i'm looking at this top so again you can pull that down and could you show us what that is the back covers of the window oh yes yes okay over here over here i wanted to cover the back window for insulation and for privacy and i also don't mind driving with this up if someone wants so they, what is that this it, is just a piece of plywood i stained it and sanded it nicely so it looks good and on the back i put contact cement and put reflectix right down oh, into it and just so you got the that's a really heavy insulation because it's plywood uh the, yes the plywood's also an insulator besides the reflectix so it works rather well what I need. And you did that on all of your side windows? No, just on my sliding doors over here. Just on this window. And on the other one like it? And the other side. Because these open up. These open and I just found, I just cut a piece of Reflectix and popped it right in. Well, let's go ahead and let's look at your kitchen, shall we? Yes. So tell me about your kitchen. Okay. The kitchen, my highlight is the freezer which is nice. It's nice. That's that's a huge refrigerator. It's a, it's a Dometic. So it's a freezer and a refrigerator. Yes, and you could make it two refrigerators or two freezers or one in, one of each. Okay. They're separate. Okay. And this one goes square all the way down. So it's not as big as the, the big van, but it's still a nice size unit. And you were saying that you could get about a week's worth of food in there. Just about, yes. Okay. Now, tell me about this countertop okay. over here. This is a, a custom-made Formica countertop to fit in this tiny area. I made a little insert so you'd have some more cutting room for counter. And that's a, so that's like a bar sink? It is a bar sink, correct. And that basically works like that. Or And you can pull that and use that. That pulls out and you can use it outside, I, I you were saying. Yes, that can go all the way outside to hose down a dog or uh, 
whatever you want there. So now you cook with what that? Okay. I have uh, over here, I have, it's called an induction stove top. All right. And it has two, two pots. I have this pot with the special bottom and I have a fry pan also. Now I'm noticing that you have that glass container on there. Now do you drive with that up there? That stays. It doesn't, it's not going any place. It's hooked up here with a little metal bracket also from a curtain rod. Uh, it has Velcro again on the bottom. Okay. And the weight of the glass is pushing down, so it, it grips. I'm pushing quite hard. It doesn't move at all. Oh, goodness. And that's filtered water uh, for drinking. So now what's your water source? That's under the sink. Was back that way. It's going to be viewed from the opposite side. This is where the water is kept. Okay. This, this is a five gallon, I think up to this point, and I fill it all the way to the top. Maybe I have five and a half gallons. And you have two of those? Yes, there's another one directly behind it, and there's a valve where I can draw from one or the other or both. Okay, so you were telling me by only drawing from one, that kind of keeps you at a point where you know when you're down to five and a half gallons. Yes, exactly. Okay, all right. So now over here is also behind this panel, your electric, let's see that. Okay, this slides off. I have the two 100 amp hour lithium batteries from okay. Battleborn. I have a 12 volt DC to DC charger from Renergy. So you can charge while you're driving. Exactly. Okay. That is the most important part to me. As well as that, if I jump up here, I have a 200 watt solar panel okay. also from Renergy. Now you are saying also that on your DC to DC, you're able to turn it on and off manually? Yes, right over here, off, on. Okay. So if I want to drive and I think it's charged and my headlights are on, I don't like to overburden the alternator. Okay. So I, I, I'll shut it down at that point. Okay. So now, and this is, what kind of inverter do you have? What? Okay, this is a... Renergy also. But and it's a 2000? It's a 2000. Uh, okay. And this pretty much runs everything, your refrigerator, your induction stovetop, and oh, you know what? I wanted to go over and look at your fuse box because that's really, in, your switches, the, how you have the, them set I, up. The switches are not, uh, the only one that is on a fuse, a major fuse, is the refrigerator has it built in to the uh, adapter that goes into the cigarette Okay, lighter. let's look at that switches. I really like those. Yes. So you have everything or most everything that's electrical on a switch? Yes. Okay. You have, let's see. You have the lights in the front. Okay. Lights in the oh, back. Okay. You have the water pump. Okay. And you have, uh, oh, we didn't see that, the fan in the back. That, so you can turn the, everything on from this box here. Right. So I see you also have two blank ones that aren't lit up. What are those for? Those are just empties. Uh, it is wired and it goes to the back corner of the van under a panel. It can be opened up for a rear view camera or for something else that someone might want in the back. Oh, end. so you already ran the wire the to wires there. that switch and right. they can put whatever they want back If there. they want to use it. Very cool. All right. You know what? I want to go over and look at the outside again and because I want to show what you did that I thought was so brilliant on the seat belt you've got for locks back there. You also have a carrier back here. Yes. And you have what's a two inch hitch back there? Yes, this was the regular, this hitch came with the truck. Oh, it did? Yes. Uh, the carrier, again, is my special. It was $79, again, at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight, <laughs> your $79 <laughs> special. It's not as good as the one from the big van, but it's good. Uh, I'm loving these straps. Th Can you tell the story of where you got these yes. straps from? Uh, these are safety belts from a junkyard, which are almost brand new because they came from the back of a sport utility. No one sits back there. So you just basically cut, it, cut them off. Pull them off, cut it off. At this end, once I know what length I want, I put sheet metal screws in just to hold the belt. And over here, on this side, it would go into the receiver that would normally be in in the vehicle. Okay. And you plug it in. It's held down by three screws. So it just holds it in. You know what? You could actually use this to hold in cabinets. 
inside your van. Anything. You could screw it Anything. in. You, you don't have to use it for that. That would be brilliant because the safety, the safety belts or the seat belts are built to withstand and hold up. So they're pretty secure in there once they're locked in. Right. And the other one comes in and out from here. Okay. So you have them crosswise. So, and you don't really, since these aren't locked down right now, these aren't locking, you don't have any that's anything that's really expensive or, you know. No, but if someone was concerned, they can just put a, a cable across here to there. Okay. And the same thing to lock okay. it down. I didn't do it for this trip. I did want to talk briefly about how you um, maintain privacy in the van and also a little more for temperature control. And then we're going to go over and talk about the fan. Um, so these are what they're called. It's from Heat Shield? Yes. And they're, are they made especially for your vehicle? Each one will be made exactly for your model and year vehicle. So you, they're made for your Sienna, 2008 yes. Sienna. Right. Okay. And about and how much do these run? I think maybe it was between a, a 120 and 135 dollars. But it does keep it pretty temperature controlled it, in there. It, it keeps out almost all the heat. I wow. Mean, it, it just goes Let's in. Let's see how it fits in the window. Okay. It fits in Let like this. Let me look how it looks on the outside. My window's down, but that's, okay. what, that's what so it that's looks. what it'll be. That's what it looks like. Okay. And then you have one for the windshield too. And the windshield. Well, you know, the windshield and the back window and sides, that's where so much of your heat comes in. It, it, I'm using it for privacy so much and the heat it, and for cold. It makes it much easier to maintain what I need, either hot or cold in the vehicle. So that's for temperature control. Let's go look at the fan. Uh, okay. and see what else you use for temperature control because this is really quite brilliant. Okay. That little fan doesn't look like much, but explain exactly what it does. Okay. Basically, I couldn't use a vent up on the roof because I don't have any real estate up there for it. Okay. Everything's taken. So I bought this one fan online. It was on Amazon. It was not expensive. It comes with two speeds, so it would blow either uh, low or high. I wanted it to reverse so it could suck hot air out of the vehicle, out my window. So you, your back, your two back windows open. So you can use the fan then to blow or draw air or draw it out. And you're saying it sucks the hot air out the window. It could, it could do it the other way. I just have to flip the, the power source going in, which is always positive to negative. I just had to switch them. So you change the polarity I on it. That's the way. I change okay, the polarity. Okay, very cool. So you actually, if you wanted, you could use one of those extra switches to put a second fan on this side. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I got lazy. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a wire running back here, so. Yes, uh, another wire could easily go to the, okay. it, it, it comes in right over here. This gets opened up okay. and fished out. So you are selling this wonderful, incredible vehicle. I don't know how you can part with it, but you are. If someone wanted to reach you, they're interested in the vehicle here um, and purchasing it, how would they reach you? They can get me at metro email address metropolitaninstallations at gmail.com. Okay, I will put that in the description. So it will be in the Excellent. description. It, the vehicle is located in uh, Coral Springs, Florida. Okay, all right. All right. Well, Barry, I know you said last time, oh, I'm not building anymore, but I know you're going to. I, I just know it. Maybe a tiny house. Oh, that, now that if I be... could only convince you to come out to California and build one for me. Yeah. That was... yeah. How about you pick another piece of land and we'll build one together? <laughs> okay. Well, all right. This sounds like a project in the works. So we'll talk. We'll talk more later. All right, Globies. Oh, I hate to leave this beautiful build, but... I must. So we will see you down the road, Barry, on the next project. Maybe a tiny house, maybe another mobile, maybe an RV. I don't know. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it up in the air. But we'll see you down the road, and I'll see you in Quartzsite in January. Yes, I definitely will be there whenever you are there. Okay, all right. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Barry. See you down the road. Bye-bye Bye-bye.